Hello YouTube, this is Weston at Weston's Toys and Collectibles and today we're going to be reviewing the new Siege War for Cybertron Trilogy Jetfire. Now this is his box and it's huge, like it is massive. Um, for comparison here is a Siege Deluxe box and here is a Siege Voyager box. So, massive box. Um, it's got the same artwork on this side as all the others did. Amazing artwork here of Skyfire or Jetfire. Uh, you got Seekers up here. Um, it's kind of just off camera there. And like Omega Supreme is right here. Awesome. On this side, it just kind of wraps around. You can see the arc. Uh, you see Jeffire's leg, and then this is most likely Iacon City. Um, I oh yeah, there is uh, some black light features on there. I don't know if there's any on the front. I don't see any. Yeah, there's nothing on the front. Um, on the back, he has his obligatory product shots. Um, you know, he's got his armored up robot mode. He's got regular robot mode. All of his armor, weapons, uh, effects pieces, and then his jet mode, which can also be armored up. So, you can go ahead and get this out of the way, and let's go ahead and look at his accessories first. Um, so, he has two of these, which split into three parts for effects pieces. Um, they can be used for any weapons in the uh, siege combat system line so we'll bring in, we'll bring in six gun here so you can use you know use them on his guns these guns don't really hold effects pieces very well let's see you can like plug them onto these so that works um, kind of plug them on here but they don't want to stick on those ones and then plug them there on that but and then of course they also fit into any of these you know, five millimeter holes because it's five millimeter peg with a three millimeter um, port inside of it. So those are pretty cool, and they do split into three parts. You have um, this piece here, like so. This piece, and then this piece, and you got two of each of them, which they merge up into this. And then, of course, you can, you know, kind of mix them a bit so that you can just stick that one in there like so or like you can double these up and make like a super extended fire blast pretty cool um, definitely like the effects pieces uh, they're very versatile in this line you can use them with every figure and it definitely adds a good play factor to the to the line. Uh, the next thing he has is these. Uh, you get two of these, which are like kind of like torpedoes. They can't hold. Nobody can hold them in a hand or whatever. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. This kid's just got this port here. Well, I mean, you can hold it like that if you want to just use it as like a bludgeoning club. I'll bring in cog real quick and just you know hold it like that um, then also two of these which can split and you can hold this like that uh, or they can be used you know with the weapon modes um, plug that in like that you hold that too so pretty much any figure with five millimeter port in their hand can hold those and then these can also be attached together. Um, let's see, they come in the package. They come in the box like this. So you have two of them. Just like so. Set those off to the side. Uh, it comes with two of these. And they are different. They got the 
three millimeter peg on either side. You look at the bottom, they're pretty much all the same except for that peg there. Um, and then also these barrels can come off, which isn't a feature shown by a lot of people, and then also has a five millimeter peg there, so somebody can use that as a weapon as well. Um, you can use it as like armor or something for another character, just give them extra guns, and then use these as shields. So that's also a pretty cool feature, and he comes with two of those. Uh, next, he comes with two of these, which these are also molded, uh, basically mirrored, um, these long rifles, and pretty cool. Um, they do have the 5mm port here, just like these do, 5mm ports. And then this one has an extra handle folded up here, so you can merge these two guns, like so, and then fold these two handles down and have one handle in the middle. It's pretty cool. And then finally, he has this chest piece, um, which basically just serves as a chest piece, and then also serves to store his battle mask in here. Now, this is going to be a two-video uh, thing. I'm going to just cover the... You know, covering the, I'm covering the um, accessories right now just to start off the video. But I'm gonna do two separate videos where he's, where I have him, plain and then armored up. So, here is the figure himself in his space shuttle mode or spacecraft mode, whatever this is. Um, really, really cool. This thing is just absolutely huge um, and just incredibly incredibly amazing looking uh, very very much like the G1 figure um, I dare say this would be a good um, almost a good masterpiece representation he would need to be just a little bit bigger but uh, very very cool and very much like the G1 uh, character model now this can open up here so you can open up this cockpit and this little piece in here can come out um, it basically is tech detailing somebody in one of the Facebook groups actually said that it's a certain um, thing that actually appears like in the media I'm not I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't really know much about it but um, kind of difficult to get out a little bit uh, but yeah you can pull this out and it's got a little five millimeter port here on the back too so if that makes any kind of purpose for anybody uh, I'm gonna set that off to the side as well and we can take one of our little uh, Titan Master buddies see if I can find one here there he is take one of our little Titan Masters and put him in a sitting, a sitting position and fit him right inside there close it up and now you can have a Titan Master piloting Jetfire pretty cool um, it'd be cool if they could have made it so this could open up and you could put a Titan Master in there too if you wanted but it's pretty cool that that's uh, a feature of this toy uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this piece back in for the rest of the review, but just kind of locks in, and pretty much here is his shuttle mode. Very cool. Um, these wings do articulate. Uh, he has rolling landing gear, which roll very smoothly. Um, yeah, that's very smooth roll. Uh, the wings, pretty big. They can also articulate, sort of. Uh, you gotta kind of click them out of place, but. That's mostly for transformation. And then, of course, you know, this can move. Uh, these ailerons can move as well. Turn them around, you can see he's got these thrusters back here, and you can use the effects pieces here for that. Pretty cool. Um, otherwise the back is basically just his legs and I mean if you flip him over you can kind of see where everything's at like here's his legs There's his arms and then this 
cockpit becomes his chest. It's basically all pretty much self-explanatory if you know how Jetfire works. Or Skyfire, however you want to call him. Um, now, I do have the Decepticon emblem flipped out here. Um, this can also be flipped around to the Autobot emblem. Pretty cool feature there. Uh, don't see that very often with Hasbro figures. And let's go ahead and get a comparison out of the way. Here he is with one of the Siege Micromasters. And here he is with... Let me transform him real quick, but it's going to be the classic Starscream figure. Just because it's kind of quick to transform and he's just sitting right here in front of me. Uh, so there he is with classic Starscream, the deluxe figure. His old buddy, uh, who betrayed him. And this is my definitive Starscream. I don't care for the Siege one. Um, I like these classic Seekers more than the Siege Seekers. Alright, so basically, now we can kind of get into another feature, a play feature of this guy, where he has these little handles here. Um, these ones, you gotta slide this panel out, and then it flips out the handle here. And then you can have another figure just kind of grab onto the handle, and he can deploy different figures. Um, you can see that in other people's reviews. I don't really have the space, the real estate here to show that off, but it's a pretty cool play feature. Um, I did have, you know, a figure stuck to every... Peg. Oh, yes, a little bit of flash right here. Some sprue flash. Hmm. Didn't notice that earlier. And then on the other side. Um, yeah, uh, other people's reviews, they show that off, but I don't really have the space here to show that. Barely have the space here for this figure, so. We'll go ahead and start transformation, I guess. Um, we'll get that out of the way. Uh, so with these wings, you want to go ahead and flip this piece in and around um, and it just kind of flips and folds flat here this will flip up and there's a slot here at the tip of the wing that goes onto this tab and then this that I showed moves around earlier just kind of flips under like so and then go ahead and push that wing up like that same thing on the other side we're going to show from this angle so you can see this whole section will flip down under, this whole section will flip down under, and then this will flip over and tab in. And you can leave these pegs out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them out so that I can do the next video um, with these. So go ahead and clip that forward. These can be just whatever angle you want them at. You just, I usually just fold them flat. And then pull right here, and it will untab these thrusters from these. And this is spring-loaded, so it will push down when you bring this up and over, and that hides that most of the backpack like that. That's a pretty cool feature. Um, now with the legs, we're going to pull these all the way out, Combiner Wars style, and then this will come off here. There's a panel, and it plugs in here, and folds in, and there's tabs right here uh, if we can get in the, you can see there's two tabs that will go into this section under the knee and that will lock all that in place very securely honestly uh, do that same thing on this leg just bring that out combiner war style untab that flip that around and it's on a double hinge so it moves around and gets the clearance it needs plug that in like so fold up these landing gear flip out the toe and flip out the heel again flip out the toe and flip out the heel and that's his legs done now we're going to go ahead and move up a bit go about here these will come out like so and this form the chest kind of pull them out to the side here like that so we can get some clearance fold the landing gear up 
pull these arms off these tabs and pull them out. And they kind of lock in securely for that mode. And they start ratcheting at a point. They get to here and then they. I don't. I think it's just this piece back in here, hitting these two in uh, these two detents back here. But it almost sounds like a ratchet joint. I think it's just the detents though. All right. So that's that. Now we can angle down slightly so we can show rotate the arm. Bend it there. Flip out the fist. This will flip in here. And there's a tab here, or a slot here, tab here, and that plugs right in. Now this one's really secure. Um, I haven't had it pop out at all, but the other one will pop out on me for some reason. And then just kind of orient this properly. And there's one arm done. The other arm's exactly the same. Fold that down, flip this down, flip this up, and you can see it's not quite as secure. Um, I can basically tap that. And then also this hand is kind of loose on mine. And we'll show this from the side. It's kind of pushed in here, compressed in. Bring it out 90 degrees, and then bring it back down at that joint. Rotate. All right, so coming up to the top now, we're gonna take the tip of the, we're gonna take the tip of the nose here, fold it down, fold it down again, so it looks like that. Then this will come down like so, bring these out, and I'll go ahead and tap them in like so, just to get that done and over with. Now these uh, will tab into slots here, these tabs here. So bring that down, and here I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. That just kind of slides in right, right there. Ah. Like so, you can go ahead and push these shoulders in, and then push down these panels, and lock them into place. And they do lock into place pretty securely if you get them in. If not, like you can move the arm and it will come undone. It's, it's not perfectly executed, but um, if you get it, you got it, and you know, you, like, if you get it right, it's pretty secure. And basically when you flip all this down, the head comes out of the air, and these are some collapsing panels that close up and hides that gap from the head, which is pretty, pretty cool. So here is Siege Jetfire, aka Skyfire. We're going to go ahead and pull down a bit. And he is massive, to say the least. Um, now that he's in his robot mode, I'm going to get this comparison out of the box, like, right now. Just get it out of the, out of the way. Here is Defensor. And bringing him, you know, face to face. He is as tall as Defensor. They are the same height at the head. Which is absolutely crazy. Like, this guy is huge. Um, here he is compared to Combiner Wars Megatron. Here he is compared to Titan's Return Voyager Blitzwing. And here he is compared to Titan's Return, or Siege Voyager Springer. So let's bring this guy over here. So Blitzwing and Springer. So you can see the Siege Voyagers are smaller than older Titans Return Voyagers. Um, I don't have any other uh, Jetfire figures. I've never actually owned a version of Jetfire. So this is, you know, the first one. Here he is compared to a G1 Power Master Prime, which is a massive figure on its, in its own right. Um, and like here he is with this MicroMaster. Um, just to 
Look at him up here. There he's compared to a MicroMaster. See, so he, he is massive, like gigantic. Um, now some features of this figure that uh, they made, other than you know the flipping, uh, this that flips around, he can be a Decepticon or an Autobot. Um, I know we all prefer him as his Autobot self, but if you look at the fist, if you open up the hand, the port for weapon holding hides away. And there you can see, like, me just trying to open up these fingers, it popped that joint out. And then when you close the fingers, oh, it's not coming out all the way. That's weird. It's never done that before. Why is that not coming out all the way? There it goes. And then same with this hand. Just close it back up, and it folds that back out. Um, as big as this guy is, he has quite a bit of articulation. Um, his ankles, uh, he has a rocker. He doesn't have any, uh, forward or back, or forward tilt or backward tilt, like, just the way his feet transform. But he's got the in and out rockers. And they tab in, which kind of sucks, because you gotta untab them just to get them loosened up to be able to move them. Um, but he does have, you know, the rocker. Uh, he has a chunky knee bend right there. And it's on a ratchet. It feels nice. Um, this one's actually feels a little bit nicer and it actually clicks a bit louder. Um, he does have a rotation here built around a universal, uh, which is friction out and friction does hold pretty well I mean that legs not going anywhere and then it is ratcheted forward all the way and ratcheted back to there not bad that's all you ever really need I think um, these panels do move it up and down like so um, he does have a little bit of waist rotation and it's very tight um, just enough that you you know wouldn't need any more but again he's got that uh, universals at the shoulders um, it could go all the way around if his wings weren't there but he does have the wings which get in the way in and out And like I said, it acts as a universal joint. Rotation here at the bicep. A double jointed elbow that gets you that far forward. And then due to transformation, it does allow for the bicep to fold into the elbow itself. And then wrist rotation. Nothing in or out. Uh, nothing up or down. And then the hand opening with the hideaway port. His head is on a swivel. It also lifts up on a hint on a panel. I'll show you real quick. There's a panel here that goes up and down. And then his head is on a pin itself or a hinge inside. So so it's a hinge swivel like most masterpiece figures would be. So that's very nice as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it for his articulation. He's got the basic articulation. Uh, you wouldn't really necessarily need any more from a figure this big and this kind of heavy. He is a very hefty figure. Um, he probably weighs, I think, probably about the same amount as three of these leader Megatrons. He is very heavy. Um, so, I think that's about it for this. Um, the next video, we will go over his armored up form um, and the features with his armor, uh, what his armor can, you know, do, and how he can implement it into his robot and vehicle modes. 
So stay tuned for that one. And until next time, till all are one.